Hello everyone, um, welcome back. I'm just going to pull up my, um, my, oh, my share. Um, but first, before we do that, just uh, drop into the chat um, where you're from and what your weather's like today. Uh, we had freezing fog this morning in our mass, lifted a little bit, but it was a cold night. Um, and good to see that at this time of year, because that's, you know, it's the end of November, it's what you would expect. So we'll not complain. So um, <clears throat> today, we're going to look at, we're trying to be a bit more positive, but we're looking at um, climate fiction, um, writing for a better world. And we're going to actually drill down on one small area. When I say small, I mean, I, the, the one that is intended, slash fiction we're looking at today. So if I can just, oh, why is that not? Oh, there we go. So our learning objectives are... We're going to craft impactful environmental stories in a condensed form. So we're kind of marrying the craft of flash fiction with climate fiction. Um, that is not to say that climate fiction always has to be flash fiction or vice versa, but this is where the two will meet. So we've got overlapping Venn diagram on this. And uh, what we what, what our aim is to inspire readers to action using this. And I, I want to just revisit these three pillars, I keep coming back to these because um, we're going to be in different parts of this um, in each different uh, lesson. But the three pillars of effective climate writing, we've kind of covered scientific accuracy and we've looked at how to verify the facts and look at research and use terminology. Um, and then today, really what I want to look at is the human connection um, and personal stories. Um, and we're, so we, util we can utilise flash fiction to tell personal stories um, about climate fiction. So um, local impact, all the rest of this in black writing, we will be tackling at some point or might have even touched on already. So um, we're going to, I'm just going down. So it's sunny and cold in Port Rush. It's sunny and frosty in Hollywood. Oh, very nice. The sun's shining in Valley Castle. Newry, freezing fog here too. Yeah, further south here, we seem to be getting freezing fog. Um, the fog is lifting in Killowen, freezing fog in Dramara, frosty in Ballina Hinch, and very cold and damp in, in South Shropshire. Very good. Okay, so what is flash fiction? Um, it's funny when you're, I, I've kind of gotten quite used to the flash fiction. I keep forgetting that I need to describe it sometimes to people. So flash fiction is fiction that is short. It's approximately 500 words, but it can change according to um, whatever journal you are submitting it to or event that you're submitting to. So, for example, I run Flash Fiction Arma and our ideal number, I suppose, is 500 words, but our maximum is um, 700 words. Um, anything approaching a thousand, you're into a, a short story. Anything smaller than, say, 200 words is technically called microfiction, but um, it still comes under that umbrella of flash fiction. Um, I think that uh, one of the most famous uh, microfictions is a Hemingway one, and it was um, baby shoes uh, for sale, never worn or something like that. So six, I think he had six words in it. So you can get a lot across in a lot in a very small uh, amount of words. So flash fiction is typically tightly plotted. It has a beginning, a middle and an end. It is about one thing, one obstacle, uh, one moment. And it typically you would have no more than two characters. Um, one character even will probably carry your story. And it is a literary art form and it takes real skill. You get in, you tell the story and you get out again. What you cannot give your reader you, can ex you cannot expect to give your reader great characterization. You can give them some, but it won't be a fully, you know, filled out. You'd be giving them pe a pencil sketch. You won't be able to give them a twisty and complex plot that doubles back on itself and gets really convoluted. Um, especially if you're reading out your flash fiction, like we have for Flash Fiction Arma, because an audience that's just sitting listening probably can only hold a couple of details. And this is why I think flash fiction is a great performance um, a spoken word a tool because it, 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 it's short and your, your audience won't lose concentration. Um, you won't be able to give your reader rich world building. What you can give your reader is signposts 
to the character and the setting. And that's kind of why it's 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 what's not said um, that leaves your your listener or your reader piecing together the story. So you have like this, um, if you like, this relationship with the reader, you're giving them some of the story and they're building the rest of it in their head. And I think that's really quite magical. Um, you can give your reader conflict. You need to. And then you can give them increasing tension, but usually no more than two beats of, of increasing tension. And you can give them a great ending. So, uh, yeah, a flash fiction must have a story arc. So it's more than just a paragraph of description. Um, you know, something has to happen. You can give them compelling characters, even though you've only sketched them in. Um, so you set out straight away what your character wants and what stops them from getting it. It must have a beginning, must have a middle, and it must have an end. Now, this um, this is a flash fiction piece, a micro fiction piece that I got. The website address is both in your chat and down along the bottom here. All right. So this, this is um, a short um, piece of flash fiction. And I just thought that this was a really good example of, of a climate flash fiction. So it's called Snow Shovel by Shosanna Jacobs. <clears throat> it matters to me whether you own a snow shovel. When we meet, I'll ask. It will ignite a long conversation about you, what you value, what you look forward to, who you help, who you are. I'll hear your words and watch your face. If you didn't, but now you do, or don't anymore, your life story will begin to reveal texture. Perhaps instead you spent money on raincoats or condo fees. If you tell me that you own a snow shovel, I'll ask you if you keep it handy, propped up next to your door or tucked away in your garage. I'll know if you live in Toronto or Winnipeg. And if your eyes light up when you tell me that you just bought the latest and super cool ergonomic model, I'll assume that you shovel for your neighbours. So if you want, you can drop into the chat um, any thoughts that you have on that little piece. Um, and I'm going to just kind of analyse it now to, to hopefully demonstrate and show you how you, you know, how this works as a, as a flash fiction piece. So um, and just a little bit of setting. Um, you can, you've guessed that it's it's written by a Canadian writer. So snow is is a big part of their life for quite a lot of the year. Um, and um, and getting the snow out of their driveway can be quite the thing if you live in Canada, at, especially at this time of year. So um, so why it works? So this pace works because it uses simple. A, a simple everyday object as a snow shovel um, as a lens through which to understand someone's entire character and life story. It transforms an ordinary question into a profound character study and the narrative voice is intimate and observant, creating a sense of careful detail to um, mirror the very act of getting to know someone deeply. The character's goal is to truly understand people, to see past surface level interactions and understand someone's core values and character. So, yeah, people are getting that now in the um, in the chat. People are saying, yes, a snow shovel to help assess a person's character. Exactly that. Um, it does say a lot in very, very few words. Um, it says that the snow shovels owners are kind and helpful. Exactly. And it brings you right into the story, a clear beginning, clear middle and an end and a great touch of humour at the end too. Well done, yes. Um, and it draws you, it, it, yeah, again, somebody else has said it draws you in very quickly and it shows how to elicit a personality through an object. So the stakes are subtle but significant. Um, the possibility of genuine human uh, connection versus superficial interaction, that's kind of what's at stake. And the risk of misreading somebody or missing important cues about someone's character looks behind the surface of every interaction for this reader. But the ending is meaningful. That that last line that says, I'll assume that you shovel for your neighbours. Um, because 
you know, buying this ergonomic, this fancy shovel, if you like. So ergonomic would have like the handle is a certain angle, so you're not going to hurt your back or your arm or whatever. So this person has thought about and has invested in buying a shovel because typically this person is going to shovel for his neighbours as well. And that says so much about the person with the shovel. Whereas if they were just spending it on what the writer thinks is as more trivial things, then they, they would have less of a, a, an, a good opinion on that person. So it demonstrates how the smallest details um, of our lives, even our simple um, tools, can reveal who they truly are. And um, it's a masterclass in show, don't tell. Um, so character is revealed through the concrete details rather than abstract statements. Why is it climate fiction, do you think? And you can drop that into the chat. So the, the reason I think it's climate fiction is because the person who shovels for their neighbours represents someone who at a local level or at an individual level um, thinks about climate action. Then there's that community a support network that becomes crucial during extreme weather events. And we're all becoming touched by these extreme weather events. You know, even just uh, for me, I drove to Belfast yesterday and there were certain parts of well, the motorway was closed, so we had to come off. And so we're driving through the countryside and I'm noticing, you know, fields that are flooded and roads that had floods across them, but they've, you know, there's enough to get past now. So, yeah. There, there is a, like this, we need a community uh, network to get us through extreme weather events. Um, and the importance of mutual aid then in climate adaptation. Um, it uses climate related consumer choices. So snow shovels or raincoats or condo fees to examine how people prepare for and respond to their local climate conditions. And this also speaks to, you know, how we allocate our resources. Um, and it also shows how climate awareness is woven into the fabric of how we understand and judge character, suggesting that our relationship with climate has become inseparable from our core values and identity. And I think that's happening more and more. So it's a sophisticated example of climate fiction that operates at a micro level and it shows um, how daily life um, <clears throat> can can help us to um, focus or you know, like small things can help us to focus on telling this story to to the world, if you like. Um, yeah, that's lovely there. We see the effect and difficulty of extreme weather and it illustrates how people must work together. You know what? That really just sums up everything that this entire course um, really is trying to say. Um, as writers, that's what we want to do. We want to demonstrate that we must work together because, yes, we started at the beginning of the thing with all the doom and gloom and the really bad headlines and the and the awfulness that is climate change. And we're, I'm hoping that we're going to work to get towards looking at, you know, some of the next sessions will show a little bit of a, a more positive outlook and what we can as individuals do to contribute to spreading that good news and to inspire people to make the changes um, that will help to change the world. So um, it sounds like a really big ask, but it's like we all did small things to get us here. Our planet, our, our population, you know, did on an individual level, you know, had the heating up too high or burned too many fossil fuels or whatever, and we all added to it. So we can all help to bring it back down again, I think. Um, more on that next time. All right, so that's um, climate flash fiction. Now, what I'm going to do is, if I can get my thing to work. Come on. Oh, sorry. I'm going to tell you about this. The, the Bangor Literary Journal actually has a 40 words competition, and it's open now for submission. But basically, um, this is a 40 word flash fiction so like that's really challenging but it's a really fun challenge so my challenge that I am setting out to you is to enter your 40 words flash fiction into the Bangor Literary Journal competition but make yours a climate story 
So now we're bringing climate stories out into the mainstream. <clears throat> How wonderful it'd be great if somebody won it. So, um, so when you're doing this challenge, I want you to um, keep what you've learned about climate writing in the story. And, and you can layer it in and you've seen how you can layer it in without it being really obvious that that's what it is. Um, word budgeting. So if I, you know, I've, I've kind of worked this out from my, when I do a flash fiction um, workshop that's about two or three hours long, um, I'll have a word budget for each section and we go through each section. So I've, I've kind of used that same formula for this. Your beginning, <coughs> pardon me, is going to be about eight to 10 words long. Your middle will be 20 words long and your ending will be about 10 words long. Now, if you take more for your beginning, you're going to have less in your middle and so on. So you it will you will be sort of fudging those numbers a little bit, but that's a general, general um guideline. So in the beginning, you want to lay out your scene or your scenario or your character goals or all of those things, which is a real task. So it middle rising tension, um character setbacks, stakes, emotional tone, all that goes into your middle, okay? But you're you're kind of ramping up. And then the end is the conclusion and, and make it make it meaningful. Like how does it all come to a head? All right. So what we have, we have 10 minutes now. So what I was going to suggest is um that you take about five minutes to think about getting something down for this. It doesn't have to be the beginning. It doesn't have to be the middle and it doesn't have to be the end. It can just be a few things about what your story is going to be about even or ideas or, you know, a phrase. Oh, I want to write about, you know, the flood that happened last week or whatever, you know. So, OK, so if you want to, I'm going to set the timer for that and we're going to come back in five minutes and you can share just a, a word on the sharing of this. You don't have to share this because if you want to use it for a competition, you might not feel like sharing it. Um, but you can also ask questions and, and get some feedback on some ideas if you want to in the chat.